morning to all of you. Uh, I'm happy to be here with BAM and um, everyone else. Uh, if I may, I, I, Butch, I'll no longer mention everyone here. Uh, you've been acknowledged earlier, and it's just, all of this is just new to me. Uh, not exactly new, but there's so much I could learn from the founders of uh, Kubo, uh, both Butch and um, Ms. Chan, and uh, I'm glad that the DTI, so through USEC, um, Nora, is, is supporting this, and a DOST as well. Before I even start my brief message today, may I request the DTI and the DOST, this is work again, BAM, to give me what kind of support, a report, what kind of support they're giving uh, startups um, and uh, the tech industry and um, innovators and disruptors. So what are the programs of DOST for this growing sector of the Philippines, the region, and the world? What is DTI doing to support it? And is it private sector driven or government led? And let's be more disruptive about it and let's support it better. As your chairman of finance, I would like to see how both departments of government have uh, shepherded uh, startups and, um, and, and the innovation hub. Now, if it's private sector led, it would be instructive if we actually learn from them and help them and fund uh, and partner with them to do more of this. So I think this is the way of the present and the future. This is how we can level up our industries and our small and medium enterprises and micro even. And so it would be good if we are on the same page and that the, the finance committee of the Senate would support this better. And so it is my distinct honor to welcome all of you here in Tectonic Summit 2018. And I'm, before I go on, I'm, I'm also a proud mother to a startup. Um, both Butch uh, and, and Bam have mentioned, uh, Bam start, before he became a senator, had his own social micro-enterprise, which was a startup. Uh, I think I am not incorrect in saying that my son also, five years ago, while he went off Yale, uh, started a startup and uh, Butch mainly calls my, st my son a disruptor. So he would be the best speaker here, not me. But he's in Munich now because he's the only Philippine company represented in the inter-solar event. So I'm glad to know or glad to tell you that I am the mother of what? Bam, an innovator, a disruptor, a startup. A <laughs> futuristic boy. <laughs> Anyway, who uh, interned, by the way, five years ago with Miss Eustachio in Idea Space? And uh, really, Leandro would be a better speaker here than me, but I learned so much from my millennial son. So, my congratulations to, I would have said it QBO, but it's called Kubo. Okay, interesting. Innovation Hub, it's President Butch Meili for organizing such an important event. Butch, is a good friend of more than 20, 30 years ago. We have two shared advocacies. One is resilience, which includes disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation and mitigation, which is an area that uh, needs innovation. And I hope we could have a dedicated uh, Kubo event for DRR. I think that would be good. And of course, the others would be micro enterprises as well. And I was talking to uh, Ms. Chan about it on how our MSMEs and our indigenous arts and crafts can level up and uh, be, be uh, converted into an online platform. So it gives me pleasure that we continue organizing events for our startup businesses and entrepreneurs, such as this one. Recently, we had a National Arts and Crafts Fair, which was a joint project of the Department of Trade and Industry and the National Commission on Culture and Arts and my office. And uh, many of these are actually products of MSMEs in the rural areas of indigenous peoples. It would be so challenging for us to find out how we can innovate and make these creative industries uh, available in the online platform so that our indigenous peoples can, can really um, make their products, which are so beautifully, creatively done, uh, not just to the Filipinos, but to the world. 
I'd also like to mention that way back 2008, 10 years ago, I authored the Micro and Small and Medium Enterprises Law, which I hope benefits many micro enterprises in our country, which is 99% or which is the backbone of the Philippine economy. At the time when we authored the MSME law, I wanted to break the notion that Filipino products are second only to their imported counterparts. I would like for our society to acknowledge that the value of our products and services uh, go beyond its novelty, to attest that Filipino skills and talents are at par with, if not even better, than international level of standard and quality. This advocacy has been a priority because MSMEs comprise the majority of our business enterprises and employ the most in our workforce. The role of MSMEs is crucial in generating jobs and bolstering economic growth for our country. According to the DTI, uh, but these are records of 2016, MSMEs accounted for 99.57% of the total business enterprises operating in the Philippines creating a total of 4.8 million jobs, or 63.3% of the total jobs generated by all types of business establishments. Now, of these 4.8 million jobs and the 99.5 MSMEs in the country, I hope that most, if not all of them, could be uh, thrust into, into becoming um, not just disruptors, but supported and, and really uh, go into uh, technology so that they could level up as well. I continue to recognize this immense potential of our MSMEs in empowering the lives of Filipino workers and in transforming our nation towards a resilient, productive, and sustainable Philippines. As your chair of the Committee on Finance, I've ensured funding support to expand and enhance the capabilities and competence of our MSMEs by allocating 1 billion pesos each for the Pondo Para Sa Pagbabago for the shared services programs under the budget of the DTI. We've also continued to fund the law of Senator Bamakino, which is the Go Negosyo Centers all over the country. So with the MSME law, with the continued uh, quadrupling funding of the shared services facilities and our continued support and funding for the Go Negosyo, and with more prospective increased funding for tech support for startups and MSMEs, I think the DTI and the OST have um, a good roadmap in the future. So aside from the DTI, I'd like to let you know of other government agencies which have programs that benefit MSMEs. Do you know that under the Department of Labor, there's a Pangkabuhayan program? I think uh, the Kubo can also look into the Pangkabuhayan program of the Dole, and this really touches the poorest of the poor. The DSWD has the Sustainable Livelihood Program. It would be good how we can automate, innovate, make it techy. All these rural-based um, programs of Dole and DSWD, SLP, I think can glean and can learn from uh, the, the uh, tech component of Kubo. TESDA has its Barangay Kabuhayan Skills Training Program. Under my law 10 years ago, we have the Barangay Kabuhayan Act, which actually provides Barangay Kabuhayan training centers in the fourth, fifth, and sixth class municipalities all over the country. TESDA also has the Skills Training Employment Program, or the STEP, which we continue to fund. The Department of Agrarian Reform, believe it or not, also has support facilities for this. The DNR has the greening program, but under the greening program, it also has micro rural-based enterprises, which helps in uh, micro enterprises for those rural communities. The DOST, which is present here today, has a set up and the start up program and the community empowerment through science and technology or the CEST. These are all good concepts which uh, I hope Kubo can look into. Why am I stating each one by one? Because you as taxpayers may not know that these government programs exist. And these programs were founded or created decades ago, long before 
the millennial generation or long before this tech summit was even conceptualized. And they could be leveled up if Kubo and tech summits could actually help uh, improve these programs of government. We have other agencies that do it, but I can see a one minute or no, a time's up uh, card here. And I would like to, to, um, to abide by that. I actually only have one third of my speech read, but because I would like to follow the one minute left, I will just email the rest of my speech to, uh, to uh, Kubo, okay? And then I don't want to take time of Bama Kino. So what is my message today? We in government would like to support disruptors, would like to support the creative industry, would like to support technology, would like to support uh, innovators. We would like to partner with the private sector and the millennial generation that really brings us the important roadmap so that those in the provinces, those in the rural areas, our farmers and our fisher folks, the rural women and the young unempowered population can actually benefit from technology. And it is through summits such as this tectonic summit, which sounds very techy, but actually, actually can be applied to a DOST CEST or a DOLE Bankabuhayan or even a this WD SLP. And so the byproduct of this event today, hopefully, can be a collaboration through BAM and through myself with Kubo, with all the innovators in this tech summit to help government programs become more accessible, become more efficient, become from innovative, become more creative. And when you are such, you touch more lives and transform more people. Thank you very much and good morning to all of you. Thank you very much, Senator.